Hello, welcome. This is question three for um, AQA's um, June 2013 um, uh, unit one paper. Uh, so, question three, it's just um, one big essay question. Um, and the key things with these questions is it, it gives a bullet point of what to answer. So, it kind of helps you um, a little bit in that respect. Okay, so the actual question says... Hadrons and leptons are two types of particles, right in account, etc, etc. Basically, we've got to describe the distances, similarities, that kind of thing between them. Uh, dear, sorry about that. So, uh, we've got to say how each of the, how, uh, how to type interaction is used to classify particles. Um, I'll go through that as I will. Uh, examples of each type of particle, um, details of any similarities between the two groups, and details of how one group may be subdivided further subdivided sorry so that gives us a clue that one of them is going to be static in terms of that's going to be as small as it can ever be fundamental particles just the kind of thing that should bring to mind now um that for this question actually um it's quite easy just to read it from the mark scheme because generally in these kind of questions the mark scheme is in incomprehensible gibberish uh, unless you know Unless you're the examiner on the day and you know what you're looking for. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is for the likes of me and you looking at uh, mark schemes for long-winded questions is a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack kind of thing. But um, for this one it's actually not so bad. If you look on page 4 of the mark scheme, uh, it's got a lower band, middle band and top band. And the lower band talks about each of them individual points that you actually asked to talk about in the question set. So, you know, forces between the particles, um, examples of them, and differences and similarities. So basically, what it is, is um, the first mark is um, uh, talking about the structure of the particles, of the two types of um, particles, sorry. Uh, and the second one, uh, second band, is sort of talking about examples and the forces that are involved. And then the top bands, so the, the, these are the extra things that get you to the full six marks, are talking about um, the actual, in terms of the actual structure. Now, when I mentioned the structure before, uh, what I was talking about was either if it's fundamental or, or what what is actually made up in terms of the individual particles, whereas the other one's talking about the actual quark inside these particles. And talking about the distances and giving a couple of examples. But you don't have to have each one of them points for the top band. It just says, have uh, the last two points. Okay. So, as I said, what I'm going to do is just going to go through a basic kind of answer, really. So, um, this video won't be covering... I'll try not to cover too much. Because I'm going to put another video up um, for Unit 1, AQAS Physics. Uh, which is going to be the classifications of particles. So, if you are generally stumped... Um, by this this kind of topic and just using this as um, kind of the revision uh, for uh, hadrons and leptons which is quite a good way to start because it's a perfect exam question for such um, I would advise actually that you spend your time and go and watch my classifications of particles video uh, that'll be in the unit 1 AQAS uh, physics playlist but uh, for the moment, if that's not up before I get a chance to upload this video, um, then it's a good way to start. And I'll try and cover as much as I can, but obviously I'm going to be saved a little bit for that as well. But I'll give you all the information you need to get the full six marks on this question. But I'm not going to do my thing of giving extra information because I'm kind of delaying that for the next question. And otherwise, this video will become about 40 minutes long if I do, because uh, I'll start to get into the strife. Anyway, so... The initial band, the lower band, obviously the one that you, you have to start in each band, but you know, this is the basics. Um, so we have our uh, hadrons and our leptons. Okay. This is actually a style I'm going to do for that other video, but never mind. So we've got hadrons and leptons. Now we're told that one, further, one group may be subdivided, but the first thing we need to say, well, what actually are they? Now, I started my answer, now there's no specific requirement for this in the mark scheme, um, and that's probably because it's a little bit too advanced, but uh, I, I didn't. I said I wouldn't give you a bit of extra background, but 
Um, it's nice to be able to start it with something different rather than this is this, this is that. Um, and with this question, you can't simply answer it in bullet points. Um, so it's totally up to the way you want to do it. Uh, AQA try and uh, almost get you to do uh, 7,000 words, but really you could just do it in points. It, it, nowhere in the marketing can say if this is in bullet points, discredit this answer. So no reason to say you can't do that. But therefore it also says, it doesn't say anything about stabbing the person next to you, but obviously you can't do that. But what I'm trying to say is you won't lose any marks if you just simply put it in bullet points. Anyway, if you are going to word it out, um, word it out means just write it so you write in a paragraph, I would start by saying, well, hadron comes from the uh, Latin word for heavy, so it's uh, particle that interacts with a strong interaction, so that's a point there straight away. Um, so they interact, now the key thing to say, interact through the strong interaction. I may have made 100% sense, but hopefully it does. And the leptons only act through the weak interaction. When I say act, that means when you know when you see the collisions of particles. So a couple of hadrons with another couple of hadrons, they exert the strong interaction. Maybe interact through strong interaction isn't the best wording of it, but they interact through the strong interaction. Okay, so that's a bit of background why they're called hadrons and leptons, so to speak. But as I said, it's not required, but the fact that leptons act through the weak interaction, hadrons act through the strong interaction, you need them um, to get into the uh, band. So, I guess actually that's probably the band. I want to top add that, I've skipped ahead of myself. Sorry, I do apologise, but there's no reason you couldn't put that as a first point if you were doing it as a way question. If you were doing it as bullet points, maybe that point would come in later on. The first thing you need to say is, okay, well, what actually are these particles? So, we said one's fundamental and one is obviously not fundamental. It can be further subdivided. Now, you should know, leptons are fundamental particles. So, that's the key thing you need to start. If you are doing this in bullet points, that's the first bullet point I would put. Leptons are fundamental particles because they are not made of anything smaller. They simply are small. And you might want to give an example at this stage, which is, an example of a lepton may be an electron, E minus. And if you look at the mass for an electron, you'll see it's very small. I think it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, which is intensely small, especially if you compare it to the mass of a proton, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Now, granted, that is small, but it's nowhere near as small as the electron. So, obviously, this leads us on to the hadrons. So the hadrons are split up into two particles. Uh, two types. So we've got the uh, mesons and the baryons. As I said, I'll clarify these two a bit more detail in the classification of the particles here, but you don't need to know. I'm just trying to explain what you need to get to the question. The mesons are, uh, so basically all hadrons are made, because they're not the smallest thing that you can get, they're made up of quarks, because obviously, say we've got a proton here, so this is a, a proton, very big in comparison, but I've enlarged it quite a lot. We've got three quarks in here. Okay, and we've got up, up, and down. So up quark, up quark, and a down quark. And they're three quarks. So basically, hadrons are made of quarks. And the mesons and the baryons are split up into two types. In, in, I mean, they're split up from the hadrons in two types. So the mesons have a quark and an antiquark pair. So it could be quark, antiquark, or antiquark, quark, mean the same thing. Or the baryons, they, this is a baryon, um, because it has three quarks, so baryons can either be quark, 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 or anti, all anti-quarks, it can never be a mixture, okay? Because you can either have a proton or an anti-proton, you can't have half an anti-proton. Well, you can, but it, it won't have half an anti-proton structure, if that makes sense, because that just doesn't exist. Um, okay, so you've got your, your mesons and your baryons. Now, the reason they're split up is... Um, I said the main difference is, uh, obviously this has a quark and an antiquark pair, and this has three three quarks or three antiquarks. Baryons all... De no, I'll stop myself. Don't need to put that in, actually. That'll go for a classification of particles video. But basically, you just need to state that's how we split up. So you've got electrons, your fundamental particles, your electron, uh, they 
the, electro the leptons act through the weak interaction, uh, the hadrons act through the strong interaction. The hadrons are split up into mesons and baryons. Mesons have a quark and an antiquark pair, whereas a baryon has three quarks or three antiquarks. Um, and the mesons consist of, of say, a K meson, K plus, zero or minus, uh, and a pi, zero, plus or minus. This is how you get them from the front you form a sheet. Um, and your baryons are made up of your protons or your neutrons. Now, obviously, you can have antibaryons and antiprotons, anti antibaryons and antimesons, but it's not asking about antiparticles, so don't feel you need to put that in. Okay, so just keep a track of where we are so far. Right, so getting up to this point here, um, you may be getting towards the end of the middle band. If you put all of what we've put so far, you would probably be sneaking into the top band, so maybe four or five marks. To get the extra mark, the extra two or one mark, however many you need, um, you need to say that they, they both interact through, well, they, the leptons interact through the weak interaction, hadrons interact through the strong interaction, we said that. However, they both decay through the weak interaction. So they both decay through weak because as we said weak sort of lets go of the particle so it kind of decays through it. Okay, so whenever you see a decay, it's always a weak interaction. That was one of the questions, one of the uh, parts of the last question. Okay, so the key thing is it wants, and it does specify in the article that it wants. Um, you to say what the what the structure is, so what the quark structure is. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. I mean, I do know my stuff, but I'm just trying to get so what I'm asking. Uh, so you need, yeah. So for the last, for the, to get six marks, you need to these quark structures. Of a, okay. So for six marks, let's build this up from uh, from the ground up. So the first two marks are for saying um, about that le leptons are fundamental particles. They're nothing made out of anything smaller where hadrons are made of quarks. Uh, then you start getting to the middle band where you start talking about uh, the... Uh, to get into the middle band, you need to mention this interaction with a strong uh, nuclear interaction. Or if you just put strong interaction, that's um, acceptable. Uh, that, and then when you've done all that, you're uh, sort of getting into the middle band. Um, and then you need to go on to say about that split onto the mesons and baryons. And then to get your top six marks, you need to talk about the quark structures and that they both decay through the weak interaction. So we've got basically we've got a similarity, um, a difference, and some key facts about them. Okay, so the, that's the first two points in the list talking about the ha, what structures are of them, uh, and then we go on to the uh, other points there. As I said, it's quite easy to deduce this from the mark scheme that you can find on EQA. Um, personally, I use EDS Physics because that's quite a nice website. It's got all the old uh, past papers on that. I'm not being paid to say that, by the way. Um, you know, but I never get paid for anything. So, uh, apart from the million dollars to make a day, which is totally obvious and believable. Uh, which is why I'm anyway going back to the actual physics. So, hopefully, that was question three. It's just a long-winded question. As I said, you could have put that in all in bullet points. I just wrote it out like that so you could see where we're coming from. Sorry. Um. Kind of made a complete hash of that. Normally, uh, when you do this kind of question, it's just the six mark question. Um, but obviously, I wasn't paying proper attention to this, uh, and I just kind of skipped it on. Uh, but anyway, if you th if you um, still with this, uh, I do thank you. Um, otherwise, I might might correct that first little video. So I might just go in about something completely random at the moment. Uh, in which case, I accidentally thought the first part was the end and. Um, had to start this a little bit of a video. And it's only a team march, really. Um, so I might have been bothered, really. Uh, so the 3B part 1 was um, give one example of a particle and its corresponding antiparticle. Well, there's hundreds that you can choose from. Uh, the main one that you probably will choose um, is the electron and the positron. Uh, you could also have the proton, the antiproton, the neutron, and the antineutron. Basically, just a particle and a little, the same particle with a dash above it. Okay. Uh, I was, yeah, I would choose one of the two that I mentioned now, um, just to be safe. State one difference between a particle and its antiparticle. Well, um, as we know, particles and antiparticles have exactly the same mass, they have the same everything. The main difference, the only difference, is the charge. They have opposite and equal charge. So basically, it's the opposite, it's the same magnitude, but 
If it's plus one, it's negative one. Okay, so that's 3B part two. Um, I mean, I'm sure that is the end, but I'll just double check. Yep, that's the end of question three. Sorry about messing that up if it's messed up. Uh, and we're going to move on to question four now.